can't handle the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Welcome to another episode of Down the Rabbit Hole on We the People Radio. I'm your host, James. I have my co-host with me, Nick and Ant. What's going on, fellas? What's up, everybody? What's up, James? Today, we have a very special guest, and I'm really excited to bring him on because uh, this is not a rabbit hole that we've gone down, and we've been covering a lot of current events over the past couple of weeks. So we figured we'd go do what this show is intended to do and go down a rabbit hole. Um, and this is a rabbit hole that kind of correlates with a lot of things that we've talked about on this show. But I want to introduce the man himself, uh, Dave Weiss, also known as Flat Earth Dave. Welcome to the show, man. We're super excited to have you on. Thanks for having me. And why does everybody introduce me as a very special guest, right? Because <laughs> you're he's a flat earther. Yeah, that's, that's exactly. <laughs> hey, listen, we've been down. We, 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 we hear it on our end as well with all the other conspiracies, quote unquote, that we go down. Uh, so we're, we're right there with you. Uh, but flat earth probably has, gets the, the brunt of all of the jokes. So um, I used to do a podcast called Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole, and it was a conspiracy podcast. It mm -hmm. was, you know, two truth tellers and a resident skeptic comedian that tried to turn everything into a fart joke. And uh, it went for three years. But in the third year, people started sending me, hey, Dave, have you looked into Flat Earth? And first I thought it was a joke. But then when they kept posting on our social media, I'd have to ban them from our social media for being so stupid. And then one day... <laughs> One day, uh, a researcher that I, uh, you know, respect very much, Sophia Smallstorm, she said that we we're talking about some crazy deceptions that were going on in the news with some of these bang bang events. And uh, I said, there's so much deception in this world. And she goes, oh, David, it's worse than that. I'm like, what do you mean? She goes, I think the earth might be flat. And I flipped out. I was like, all right, what do you got? And she's here, watch these videos. And she sent me Mark Sargent's clues and another video. And so I watched it and I said, all right, that's it. I'm going to prove the globe. I'm going to destroy flat earth, prove the globe and end this nonsense because it's infecting people's brains. And for two weeks, I didn't sleep. I didn't sleep at all. And I, I literally fell asleep on my computer, woke up, started looking more. And I started doing tests myself. And at the other end, I came out and I'm going to look, I, I looked like Nick's going to look by the end of this show. <laughs> So yeah, Nick, Nick was firing a ton of questions at us all week. Like, yo, yeah. what about this? What about that? And I was like, listen, you just, can I, wait, can I, you know, Karnak, I'm going to, I'm going to be Karnak. Yeah. What about Nick's going to say, what about boats over the horizon? What about seasons? What, what about sunsets? Right. What, how, how what, do do? what's the, what's the point of making the, the earth a globe? If it was always originally why does it thought, thought as flat. Why does it matter? Yeah, why does it yeah. matter? Happy to answer that now, but it's kind yeah. of better after I show you that it's not a ball. Let's and wait then till we the can end, get yeah. into the reason why. Because it's the biggest lie ever. It's so big that people are like can't even fathom a deception like this, and like why would they do it? And I'll just give you the uh, I'll give you the the short of it. It's about mind control. It's about controlling our minds. It's about not letting us know where we are, uh, who we are, and what we really are. It's about um, making us think that we're insignificant and that we have no power. And it's literally about taking our power away and, and causing us to live in fear. Because when you live in fear, fear is the only, uh, is the only enemy. So do, if you live in fear, what's that? How, how does a, a, a globe make me live in fear? Yeah, so so when you discover the Earth is flat, you discover a lot of other deceptions, like you know the Cold War wasn't really a Cold War, that the space race never happened, that nuclear bombs aren't what they say they are, that asteroids aren't a, aren't a danger, that Kim Jong Un is just a retard that is standing in front of a green screen and claps. <laughs> yep. Okay. That none of none of this stuff that we're supposed to be afraid of is real. So you take all that fear out and you're like, huh, this world is a really nice place. Well, we have flat earth conferences. And I just thought about this. I just said this for the first time on another show. If I was at a flat earth conference and let's say I didn't want to bring any credit cards. So I had a wad of hundred dollar bills, big fat wad of hundred dollar bills. And it fell out of my pocket. It would get returned to me. Somebody would pick it up and figure out who, who lost the money and they would, they'd bring it back to me. I wouldn't think that anyone at that conference would steal from me. So these are people that have 
gotten rid of your fear. And when you get rid of your fear, you actually become a better person because you're not like, I'm in fear. I, I need to do this. I need to hoard this. I need to do that. I need to think about myself. You're thinking about other people and it really changes who you are. Even now there's plenty of good people in this world that would return the money, but all flat earthers become really good people for some reason. So it's, it's really funny that you bring that up because, um, I 100% agree with you in the fact that they're trying to instill fear in us. That's what they're doing with the China virus from China. Um, that's what they're doing with literally uh, Russia and, and North Korea was just fear mongering nonstop. Iran's the same thing. It's all threatening to keep us in a state of fear and then they can control us. So you're 100% right there. And it's so funny to me that that you're going down the path of flat earth when in my mind when i was going down these rabbit holes i've been doing this for a very long time uh flat earth was the last like last thing on my mind like i was like you know what this this what is what is the different what 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 difference does it make if the earth is flat or round like i didn't think of it in, in a state of fear like nick said yeah so that and then also if we get our freedom back how long can you keep it if you're lost in space and your mind's in a prison and you don't know who you are, where you are, what you are. How long are you going to keep it when the rulers of this world know the truth? They know the magic, for lack of a better word, of this world. They know mm -hmm. how, how strong their thoughts are. I, I look at it as an analogy between, uh, you know, the, the documentary with Keanu Reeves called The Matrix. Mm -hmm. Love right? that movie. So I talk at, about it all the time. At the beginning, Neo is lost. He's lost in the matrix. His mind is in the matrix. He doesn't know where he is, who he is, what he is, or what power he has. And he's kind of depressed. It's kind of like the world. Go out there and look at people. They're lost in the matrix. They don't know where they are. And then, then at the end of the movie, look at Neo. He took back, he figured out who he is, where he is, what he is, and the power of his own mind, right? And he became awake and aware and just a better, a better, more powerful person living uh you know his true creation and that's what flat earth does for people it literally gives them their divinity back that's a really There's mushrooms too yes <laughs> <laughs> mushrooms too but, all right uh, let's let's get into some let's get into so, some uh so some questions so for me for me flat earth kind of ties into a lot of things that i've studied with antarctica and operation high jump and what the nazis do and operation paperclip especially so for me i i never necessarily believed what we were told because i know nasa is garbage a total hot garbage it was created by warner von braun who was brought over during operation paperclip and is a nazi scientist um mm. so i always had questions about what they were telling me but i couldn't wrap my head around the fact that the earth was flat for me yeah. it it wasn't something that i really you know his gravestone right you know about yeah. his gravestone okay. it was psalms what 19 uh 19 one right 19 one um and it's uh what's the exact Talk, quote talks about the 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 god separated the waters from the waters with the firmament or something like that so the so, dome he talks about the dome covering the earth the nazi rocket scientist Here, here's the problem with Werner von braun real quick is the space race was fake. So did they really bring over a Nazi scientist or is he just another actor from Hollywood playing the part of a friggin' Nazi scientist? Well, that's, that's a very interesting take. Um, have you studied Operation Paperclip at all? I have, I know all about it. But the, the thing is that that could just be a part of a story. It doesn't matter, it really doesn't change anything. Whether he was or he wasn't, mm -hmm. that's the story they're telling us. But he wrote a book in nineteen the nineteen fifties called Mission to Mars. Look it up on uh, on um, Amazon. Mission to Mars by Werner von Braun, and on the cover of it is a rocket, and the rocket is the exact rocket, close to the exact rocket that Elon is going to be using to go to Mars, right? And it's a story about a civilization that a breakaway civilization on Mars led by a guy named Elon. That's so wild. And when did he write that? Come on. It's predictive <laughs> programming. Well, They're no, literally, this is how they do stuff. We talk about the books, uh, The Last President and Baron Trump's Magnificent Journey. Oh, yeah, yeah, Journey. that's a good one. And that's, those are, yeah. that's a very similar instance uh, where it was predictive programming and things happened. It's really wild. Um, and that's, that's, that's nuts. I want to get your take at the end about what you think about Elon Musk because I, I, I'm not sure what to think about him. James, yeah, where did you leave off at? 
So, oh, so yeah. I, we're, we were talking Nick, about. You should ask. Yeah, I am. Yeah, I was. So, I was passing it off to you. Yeah. All right. So, I, one of the examples that that I was researching was Orion and the constellation. So, when you're in Australia, right, Orion's upside down, and then when you're on the northern hemisphere, it's the other way. So, if you wore right. a globe, how how was how does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, so so these two pictures of the moon were taken at the same time, one in the north and one in the south, and they look upside down to each other. One's in the night sky, one's in the day sky, so that's a whole other thing. But that's just because you're at the opposite sides of the room. The earth is flat, the, everything in the sky is close, it's on the ceiling. So if we drew a six on the ceiling and we were at opposite ends of the room, one of us is going to see a nine, the other one's going to see a six. And that's how things are upside down. And then the reason you can't see a star in the north, like the north star from the south, um, although there was an observatory at 30 degrees south that filmed the North Star, which is impossible on a ball. It's just the, the weather conditions and the atmosphere conditions were right, um, and it could see it. That um, if we were in a giant room, uh, in a room, 10 foot high ceilings, right? And we made the room 10 miles wide, okay? Giant room. And I sent you five, eight miles away. I'm not going to be able to see you. A 10 foot high ceiling will merge with the floor in less than five miles. What right? about the telescope or binoculars? Clouds in the sky, over your, way over your head, out over the water, those clouds will touch the water from your perspective at 20 miles away, 20, 30 miles away, maybe. So a 10 foot high ceiling would merge. We're not gonna be able to see each other unless of course we had a zoom lens to open up that space. And when we both look up, we're gonna be looking up at different lights. That's how, yes, that's how it that works, is, it's all due to perspective. True. Absolutely. Yeah. So then what would you say to the thousands of pilots that say that the earth is got a curvature? They train though, like go it's talk a flat. To the thousands of, I'd say go talk to the thousands of other pilots that say it's not, there is no curvature. So you can't see curvature from uh, 35,000 feet. This is 120,000 feet and it's flat. It's when they don't use a fisheye lens that, uh, that you can see. Um, Science, Neil deGrasse Tyson says that 127,000 feet, you won't see curvature. So, you know, Felix Baumgarten, everyone says, what about Felix Baumgarten? You know, he did his Red Bull jump. Yes. And um, and uh, it, that's because they used a fisheye lens. I'm trying to find the picture uh, as we talk. So I, again, here's Felix Baumgarten. And he said he saw the curvature. Now, was Felix lying or did he expect to see the curvature? He's wearing a curved helmet the entire time. When you look through curved glass, the, the horizon's gonna look curved when you're standing on the ground, let alone up here. Or was he told to do this? Because there was two test jumps that he did before this that they didn't have GoPro fisheye lenses and everything was flattened at eye level. But then the one they aired was this one. And we have video from the test jumps that show a flat level horizon. The other problem- Do you is have those videos? All yeah, they're on the, they're on my app, and I'll, I'll talk okay. about that. Um, all of this, these rivers, everything. This is all New Mexico. This is all New Mexico. So New Mexico is either a fifth of the planet, maybe even a quarter, or this is just a fish eye lens, <laughs> which it is. It's a fish eye lens. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is a lot of space on uh, uh, on the Earth. That is New Mexico. Yeah. So it's yeah. a fish eye lens. That's it. You know. The horizon, when this is 120,000 feet, it, a, a balloon, and the sun is right there. The sun's right there. It's right there. And you can see a hot spot on the ground. Every, if it was 93 million miles away, it would light up everything evenly, but it's lighting up the local area right below it. So why, why is it that, uh, like I've seen people take weather balloons and attach an iPhone to it and let it go up, and you could kind of see a curvature. Is it just because the camera... That's not a fisheye lens. Well, um, all lenses have have some curvature to it. You need a, a, a very high end, high end lens to show you. But the problem is, we see a certain distance in all directions. So let's say it's hundred miles or five hundred miles at that height or whatever it is. So if you plot, you know, the same distance all the way around you, you're plotting a circle, a flat circle, and your brain is telling you it's a sphere. Because if I'm standing on the ground. I should only be able to see the water surface at three for three miles because there's a six foot drop at three miles. 
six mm-hmm. foot tall person at the edge of calm water. She'd only be able to see the water for three miles, but we can see the water way farther than that. But even whatever the distance is, you're seeing a circle and your brain is telling you from programming that it's a sphere. But in, in reality, you're just seeing in a circle. Well, where do you think the program, the programming stems from? Do you think it stems your, from the NASA programs and from and started well, when we're, it, it started we're born. with your parents when they gave you a mobile over your crib of a solar system, okay? And then they bought you NASA sheets for your bed. And then Sesame Street had astronauts on it. Werner von Braun was on Sesame Street and Walt Disney. Mm-hmm. And every single cartoon and television show was all about the, the globe programming. And Universal Pictures, the spinning globe before NASA ever went up into space. And it looked exactly like the pictures that NASA brought back from space. How did they know what it would look like when nobody had ever been up there? You're saying it's part due to your reticular activator. Do you know your reticular activating system in your brain? Like we are conscious uh, of conscious speak to each other. Memory. So it's like if you if you bought a Ford Mustang, a yellow Ford Mustang, everywhere you drive now, you see yellow Ford Mustangs everywhere. It's like you start noticing things because you have it or you're trained to think like that. It's like when you're well, subconscious, it's a part of your brain that your subconscious tells your conscious to, to be on the lookout so for. Most people don't realize there's globes in every single show that you watch. Everything. There's globes everywhere. I have a globe in my desk. Of you have a globe in your house? Right here. Yeah, I'm looking at it house? right now to my right. Go, can you grab it? Yeah. Hold on. Go grab it. Yeah. Go grab it. And now turn it upside down and read the sticker on the bottom, on the on the bottom of the base. On made the bottom of the base. Made in China. <laughs> Is there anything else that says right there? No, what, what does it say right there? Globes are meant for educational purposes, but only but only decorative purposes. Globes are not meant for educational purpose, but only decorative purpose. Huh. Yeah. Why, why would it say that? That's <laughs> because this is the reason why. Because they don't want anybody um, going out on. Uh, I'm trying to find a. Uh, I can't even find a good globe. They don't want somebody going on a um, trip like from South America and trying to go to Africa, thinking it's like three thousand miles away, when in fact it's like eight thousand miles away. Okay, because because that's not what it looks like on a on a flat earth on a flat earth. Have you ever seen the longest journey by foot? So look right here. So if you wanted to go from here over, you think, oh, that's a short little trip, right? That's not too bad, right? That's kind of what it looks like on a globe. You know, maybe it's a little farther apart on a globe, but when you look at it on a flat earth, it's it's way different, you know? You're gonna go, I can't see with all my arrows on here. Um, let me find a better <laughs> one. Um, here we go. This one's got it too, but it, it's from South America to go all, it's a much longer trip across. It's much well, longer. So, so on your, on so your again, map, what's your edge? What's the edge of the planet then? So, so the flat earth is not a disc in space. This is not what flat earth is. What, what, it, what it is, is think of a, a pond is a low spot where the water accumulates and the edge of the pond is what? Where the water is higher than the, where the land is higher than mm-hmm. the water, right? Mm-hmm. So the earth is a giant pond, a giant lake, and all of the continents are islands that are surrounded by water. But the earth pond is surrounded by land. And that land is the highest land on earth. And that land is called Antarctica. Antarctica is the highest land on earth. It is the container that holds our water. All large bodies of water at rest lay flat. And what's out here? I don't know. It's off limits. No one's allowed to explore past Mm -hmm. this pink line, which is a 60 degrees south. Okay. Could there be other oceans and other extra territory, extra terra? Maybe some extra terrestrials could live out there. Right. Well, yes. maybe there's humans out there that speak English. Okay. You know, that, that have migrated out there before this was all hidden from us in the 1800s, there was airships bigger than aircraft carriers flying around the world. Okay. How come we don't hear about them? They mm-hmm. demonized airships with the Hindenburg, uh, false, you know, fate. Yep. I mean, it was a real thing, but it was demon, it demonized heli- uh, um, hydrogen. And then, there's a helium shortage. You know why? Because there isn't a helium shortage. NASA owns all the helium companies and uses all the helium for themselves. And what do they use it for? 
you know what a saddle loon is? It's like a satellite NASA, balloon. Satellite balloon. Yeah, NASA launches tens of thousands of satellites on balloons in Antarctica. They don't tell us about them. They're crashing all over the world, though, and people are getting videos of them. But there, there's thousands of them. We have ex-military people that talk about the recovery program where they can capture these things in air. They go up for over a year at a time, maybe much longer, and then they can recover them in the air without ever bringing it, without ever, you know, making them crash when they what need to bring them in. Um, they do all sorts of things. Maybe they're taking pictures. Maybe they're doing some sorts of communications. But reality, they're not doing GPS because GPS uh, needs something that's not moving. Uh, needs ground. It's a the GPS is a ground positioning system. It used to be called the RAN, uh, but then they put a graphic overlay over it, and all of a sudden said it was uh, said it was um, satellites. But in reality. All 99% of our communications or something like that is done through undersea cables. But yes. what you'll notice is there's no cable from Santiago, Australia, which is really close on a ball. It goes all the way up, you know, all the way around and back down. When, you, when, you, when an airplane is flying to Santiago, let me show you where it goes. Because this is, this is crazy. This does it for a lot of people. If you want to fly from Santiago you would think that this is the shortest trip, but because Antarctica is so cold and desolate, it's too dangerous. So why don't you just stay at 55 degrees South and go around Antarctica and go over here, right? That is the shortest path, right? Yeah. But that's not how planes go. What they do is they go, where is my, everything moves for me all of a sudden. Um, they, they go, when they wanna go from Santiago, they go, here we go. They go all the way up to North America, across the equator, the Northern Hemisphere. They go across and then all the way down. Or if you want to go all the way over here, it's worse. They go all the way up. They cross all the way over to Europe and Dubai, and then they go all the way down. And if you want to look at that on a flat earth map, here it is. Let's do the trip to the other side of, of uh, Australia. It comes all the way up across America, Europe, Dubai, and Australia. It's a straight line. Airplanes kind of wind fly reason why? straight and level over the Earth plane. What's that? Is there a reason why in terms of the winds or safety? Why they wouldn't fly right across? Well, like they, you know, the, the Globers will say, you know, they, they used to say, well, they, they have to go pick up other passengers because, you know, it's all about money. Well, there's sold out flights that need to go, that want to go from Santiago to here. Now there are some direct flights that don't that don't have to stop, but they still take this crazy. They still take a path that goes all the way into the north, because that path is a straight line. You know, if Santiago, you know, all the way up across, right? That's one. That's one way they go. So you 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 subscribe to that? All the continents are basically still connected. Is, is oh no, they're 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 disconnected. I mean, this isn't a super accurate map, but the, these spaces are bigger than you believe. The 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 uh, Rus Russia and uh, and um, Alaska are like thirty five miles apart. I mean, that's that yeah, nobody really, disclaims that. Really that's the close, same yeah. on a globe too. Yeah, what's that? That's they're really close. You could take a short yeah, they're really on. close. So um, there's all different ways to look at it. But again, anything outside of Antarctica uh, is speculation because we're not allowed to go there no. i mean the, the crazy thing is this is the crazy thing do you know um how fast nick, nick do you know how fast the earth is spinning no i mean i couldn't i mean i could go right well by the way i didn't know any of yeah. these answers when i was at yeah at the equator it's thousand, spinning a thousand miles an hour thousand miles an hour yeah yeah thousand forty whatever um it's also orbiting the sun at mm -hmm. sixty six thousand six hundred miles an hour, I saw number, this diagram right? on a uh, on one of the videos to rebuttal you. <laughs> yeah, and then it's chasing the sun at a half a million miles an hour. Can't even fathom what that is. No. And that entire system's moving sideways at a one point two million miles per hour. Okay, so think about all of those motions. You guys know what the Georgia Guidestones are, right? Yes. Yes, definitely. So, so the Georgia Guidestones has this little hole. 
And if you look through this long, thin hole, like a straw hole, literally it's like, you know, it's like that, that big. Mm -hmm. You look through it and what you will see is Polaris, the North Star. And it's always there. Meanwhile, we're spinning, twirling, whirling, and whooshing at, 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 at speeds and distances that you can't even fathom. But this thing's been up for over four decades and the North Star is still in that hole. Just the spin of the Earth. Don't they have the same work. setup at Stonehenge too? Over yeah. The hole? Don't they have a little setup yeah. like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So don't we, didn't we have a different North Star? Another... What's that? Didn't we have a different North Star? Some Nice th story, bro. Like 10, <laughs> they 20, said 40,000 years, years ago, we, we yeah. had a different North Star. Yeah. And then in another 40,000 years, it's going to be Thuban or it was Thuban, yeah. right? But we just happened to live at the time where Polaris is lined up. Now, these guys built this thing. It costs hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? They didn't build it so it won't work in a couple of years. And even if we if we were supposed to get a new North Star, well, it would be unlined up. You know, it, it's got to move a couple of degrees a decade. It hasn't moved a frigging quarter of a degree, right? How far is that we're away? We're traveling though? billions of miles. What's that? How far is that star? Uh, so they tell us it's uh, they they the NASA gave us gives us two numbers that are like forty trillion miles difference. Okay, that's just it's they don't even know they're making up shit all the time. How far oh, is the sun? They tell us the sun is 93 million miles away. You know how they you know how they came up with that? They, because one day um, Venus, which is about the same size as Earth, transited the sun. And for somebody on the East Coast and somebody on the West Coast, it starts and ends at different times. And they did some funny math and they said, oh, it's 93 million miles away. What's wrong with that equation? What's wrong with that equation? It's equivalent to this equation. Nick, you got a million dollars in the bank and I'm gonna double it every day for three days. So tomorrow, how much are you going to have? If I have a million in the bank, you're going to double it every day? Yeah. Yeah. So two million. tomorrow, how much we have? I have two million. And the next day? Four million. And the next day? Eight. Uh, yeah. So you so you have $8 million in the bank, right? Yeah. What's wrong with that equation? Uh, I assumed you had a million dollars in the bank. They assumed Venus was the size of Earth. I assume Venus is the size of a basketball. Prove me wrong. Yeah, that's a wild. Nobody can. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a wild assumption that you can't. Like, how yeah. are they going to? So, well, well yeah. if you know your own height, and then you can measure a shadow based on Earth that this that the planet casts. I'm not, I'm, I'm just speaking hypothetically. I'm not an astrologer by any means, but if I know I'm five foot ten, okay, and the yeah. shadow I cast is X, and then the shadow that the planet can cast is Y, then I can get the the size of that planet. So I think he's referencing the Wait, two stick how's the planet? Yeah. How does the planet cast a shadow? He, I don't know. A moon casts a shadow. And then well, based the, on the, the moon. See, if I, could, if, I could, if I could find the size of the moon, right? But you can't. Why not? Because nobody can. The only thing that we can truly say about the things we see in the sky is that they're lights. Because if they weren't lights, we wouldn't see them. Nobody knows how big or how far um, any of them are. And then the whole thing that you might be getting towards is Aristop Aristophanes, excuse me, um, the Greek philosopher or mathematician that that had, um, he could Shadow. see the sun yeah. at the bottom of a well, so he put a stick up, and then his buddy put a stick up, and but your buddy's stick had a shadow. This one didn't have a shadow, this one did. So it only works if the earth is curved. And then he figured out that vector and then did some math and he came up with the size of the earth and Carl Sagan in the Cosmos show, he, mm -hmm. he drilled that into every kid's head and it's literally taught in every school across the entire world. But in fact, that, that doesn't work. It doesn't matter because that the experiment was never done. The story was made up in the 1980s stuck into school textbooks and it never really happened. But on a flat earth with a small local sun, this stick has no shadow. This stick has a shadow. Now I can calculate the distance between these two sticks, the angle of the shadow, and I can do math and tell you how, what the severity of this flat surface is. It's just math. We don't live in an equation. This works on a flat earth and it works on a ball earth. So it doesn't prove either. Well, that's one of the points that you make is that there's uh, evidence that shows things work on flat earth and globe earth but not and flat earth alone but not globe earth alone 
like certain experiments. Nothing goes what, into the global. What are only some of those? Bots. What are some of those experiments that we can conduct? Like people, people listening that they can conduct, conduct the Cavendish experiment. The Cavendish experiment has mm. failed. It was a horribly done experiment, and it, and it, and no one's ever been able to reproduce it. And it's nonsense. Um, a lot of know, colleges, like when I was researching, a lot of people said they reproduced it. They, they, nobody did. So look into it deeper. If the, if the, if the Cavendish experiment was right, a plumb line next to Mount Everest should be pointed towards the mountain a little bit, but it's not. A plumb line goes down here. A plumb line goes down in Australia. It doesn't go up. It goes down. Down is down, no matter where you are across the Earth plane. It's not opposite. Um, you don't go to the southern hemisphere and things flip. Yeah. It, well, it's you're just across the room that's it the inner the inner north you know what, let me can you uh, activate screen sharing it, i think it's on um it's not it, it's uh it says host disabled participant screen sharing let's try there you go all right so not yet nope um nope. you work on that and i will yeah, i'll you... talk about another one here is a submarine and we have uh, submarine uh navigators that have told us the way a submarine navigates is it goes about 200 feet from the surface, not from the bottom. And then they set their fins, their wings, just to go straight and level. If the earth was curved, they'd pop out of the water, but they can go for hours and hours and hours at full speed and never have to adjust. And they're following a straight line under a flat surface. If the earth was curved, that surface would be going down and they would pop out of the water but they don't, they just go straight and they stay 200 feet down. That's screen sharing. You just did something crazy. I don't know what I did. <laughs> <laughs> You're sharing your screen. So you wanted to hit stop, stop screen sharing. sharing there I think. We go. There All we right. Go. Let me see if you activated it. Uh, nope, not yet. Hey, what you can do, you can just make me the host real quick. Just click on go. my try, three buttons. Try, try now. There you go. You did it. There All right. Go. So, so this is my this is my app, right? You guys can see the whole thing. You have it mm -hmm. uh, it's on the full screen. Yeah. 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 So so the the face of the earth is a clock and I'll speed it up. So you'll see that the sun is about to pass the moon. So we, you're not going to see the moon for a couple of times around. The sun is the hour hand on the clock. It goes around once every 24 hours. Mm -hmm. The sun keeps track of the hours and the days. Now you can see it's gaining distance on the moon and the moon phase is changing. The sun will lap the moon in its daily cycle um, once every 28 or 29 days. So there's the cycles of the moon. So the position and the phase of the moon keeps track of the weeks and the months. How do you show I an eclipse on down? it? Yeah. Well, I'll show you. I'll show you the clips when we're, we're done with this. The app actually doesn't show eclipses. I'm, we're, we're working on an API to give you, because the moon has to migrate like the sun does. I'll get into that in a minute. But the, the stars, the fixed stars that never change, um, that reset every year, year after year, decade after decade, century after century, they're spinning slightly faster than the sun. So right now the sun is in whatever constellation that is. And then next month, uh, Pisces will catch up to the sun and the sun will be in Pisces for a month. And then the mm -hmm. Taurus will come after that or whatever. I'm not good at naming all of these. So it'll so lap the sun once every year. So and this so sun, the, this sun right here, right? Yeah. Does it change position closer to the center, or further away from the center? Yes, very good, very good. So you see the outer yellow line is the Tropic of Capricorn and the inner yellow line is the Tropic of Cancer. So I hit the little jumping guy. I'm gonna bring it up to June. So in June, it's over the Tropic of Cancer. And that's when we have our inner Northern summer, right? Because the sun is closer to us. So it's higher why, in the sky. Imagine why, an airplane why, why flying. Did it, why did it move? Well, it, God moves the sun, all right? The sun is not a physical object. We can get into that in a minute. But, but, I need, imagine but you, you, have to, you have to explain why it moves. It doesn't just jump. Like there's, well, no, it migrates. We can explain it migrates seasons. Six months. But, but hold on. With the globe, you explain the season based on the Earth's tilt of the axis. So you have winter and you have summer. So why does the right. Earth move? It just does. And this proof between the shadows and the... And the, and the no. No, no, you can't see it's proof it. because this, the, you, even Einstein, who was an idiot, said that you can't prove whether we're going around the sun or that the sun's going around us. Um, 
So imagine an airplane, two airplanes paralleling each other. One of them is 10,000 feet directly above your head. And one of them is 50 miles to the south. Same height, same height paralleling it. The one over your head is your summer sun. It's closer to you. It's higher in the sky. You're going to see it longer. The one out south is your winter sun because it's farther away. It's lower in the sky, just like we're seeing it now. But right now, the sun is moving. It's coming back um, from its, uh, its outer loop. If I move it out to January so or December, if um, in December, whoops, I think I went too far. Um, I went a little too far, but that's right. December, it's out over the Tropic of Capricorn and it's the outer southern land summer. The sun's farther away from us. It's lower in the sky. It's over us and it's gonna go right over Australia. So they're in the heat of their summer while we're in the middle of our winter. And that's, that's because it's closer and higher in the sky. It's that simple. Did you know that in the heliocentric model during our winter in the north, the sun is 3 million miles closer to the earth during our winter. And they say it's just the little tilt of the earth that's making that difference. If that was true, <coughs> sunrise every day would be freezing because that's the ultimate tilt away from the sun. But in, in June, on June 21st, if you go out and watch the sunrise on the horizon, as soon as you see the sun, you can feel the heat on your face, very strong. Yeah. And then you go six months later in December here in the north, when the sun is at its highest point for the day, a much more direct angle, you can barely feel the heat on your face here in Connecticut, right? And that's because it's farther away. It has nothing to do with the angle. So where, like, got it? Where would you say the sun is located then? Like, is it inside our atmosphere or is it outside our atmosphere? <laughs> so, so... Let's, let's get into that. That's, that's a good question. So um, if you hit the frequently asked questions. Is there even an atmosphere? Well, there is atmosphere. There is, there is, I call it an atmosphere plane. <laughs> All right. There's okay. air here. We're inside the earth system. I believe it's enclosed. So there's air here. But I believe that the sun and the moon are being projected, for lack of a better word, into our reality. Again, this is stuff we can't prove, but I can show you an example that I can do a, an experiment that shows you, huh, it does work that way. That's very interesting. So if I hit eclipses on the frequently asked questions, up come a whole bunch of eclipse videos. So here's an eclipse video that I made. And now I believe that the sun is being projected into our system. So so on the right is an actual eclipse that I'm looking at. There was a little haze in the sky. And on the left, I'm creating the same thing um, with a, uh, a projected sun on the back of a paper towel. So during the eclipse, they saw, can you see my mouse? Yeah. 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 All right. So this thing, this eclipse looks like a little mini sun. Like, what is this? Now, this sun is actually the same amount of eclipse, but it's just so bright, it's blowing out the lens. But the eclipse is about at this phase. This other thing jumping around is a lens flare, okay? Mm -hmm. But this one here was locked to the sun's position, right? It's not a lens flare, so what is it? And so what I think is that the sun that we see is being projected into us and no one ever sees the moon approach the sun or exit the sun during an eclipse. And I think it's because the moon is on the outside of the firmament. So here, here's the, the eclipse that I'm making, right? But I used a paper towel and, and I'm thinking, okay, what if the sky screen was not as opaque as that? So I used a thinner tissue and look, here comes my eclipse. You don't see this moon approaching. You just see the eclipse happening. And look, there is the same thing. There's the same thing. So perhaps we're seeing the projector of the sun through the sky screen. That's really a lot wild. to take in. That, that's, that's really wild. I've never, so if I were to do yeah. that with my own paper towel roll, I'd- Yes, uh, you, can, I, you can do it yourself. I could get so, it that same outcome yeah so it is yeah. a repeatal experiment so yeah you, so you, so there it is and this is the projector like you ever see a rear projection screen and you could look through the screen and see the projector yeah 
yeah, so that's kind of what I'm saying we're seeing there. So that image, so, was that coming from the back of your paper towel tube where you had the actual flashlight? So the, the it's, 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 it's on the outside of, so the paper towel is basically the sky screen and the sun is being projected in. Um, I'm not gonna, I, I don't wanna just be playing videos the whole time I'm here, but um, just real quick on the app, all the questions you're gonna ask are here, you know, like, hey, why the lie? These are the stuff that YouTube is hiding from you, like ships over the horizon. If I click ships over the horizon, up come all the videos that you won't find. And these are things that you can test and verify for yourself. Am I still sharing? Yeah, I'm still sharing. Well, that's um, that's another thing that makes me question yeah. the, the what we're told. Because when they go into full cover up and they hide everything, they're not doing right. it just because it's nonsense. They're not just right. hiding everything from everybody because it's some crazy lunatic who's talking some nonsense. They're hiding it because it's there's probably some truth to it. And they what about Antarctica? It. Like Antarctica has cruises though. There's like the Antarctica cruise ship or cruise line. Yeah, you go right up to the edge. Maybe you go in. Correct. Less than half a mile at most. And I think watching some of your videos, Dave, right there's maybe 17 companies however many that go to antarctica and they're all owned by one parent company. one guy yeah one parent company so that's kind of like you know our networks our news networks are all owned yeah. by the one board of directors um and it and it'll cost you ten to thirty thousand dollars to go for a couple of days they show you nothing how come there's no cruise from um from south america to australia because it's too far they can't fake it you know, on an airplane, they can do a direct flight because airplanes can go a lot faster than they're telling anyone and no one would even know, not even the pilot, if the GPS was lying to him. And that's what GPS does in the South, it lies. South is every direction away from the center. East and West are circles. Every day there's a new video down here. And I say, just watch the video every day for two weeks and you two will lose the respect of your family and friends, just like I did. <laughs> well, we, 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 we did that a long time ago with the rabbit holes that we've gone down and tried to tell our, our friends yeah. and family. So we're, we're, we're yeah. comfortable doing that already. Um, so here's a, a, a flight from Taiwan to LA, right? And that's mm -hmm. how it would go on a ball. But there was an emergency right about here. Someone had a heart attack or was having a baby. So they could have gone to Hawaii they could have, well, I'm not pointing. They, they, so there's emergency right about here. They could have gone to Hawaii. They could have turned around and gone back. But instead, they went all the way up to Alaska, which is thousands of miles out of the way. But when you look at it on a flat earth, that's really where it goes. So yeah. it happened right here. They just went to Alaska right there. It was on the way. It wasn't thousands of miles out of the way. There's a book called 16 Emergency Landings Prove Flat Earth. You can buy it on Lulu or it's free online, a PDF version. Uh, just sit down and look at that. Every single emergency landing that in this book makes zero sense on a globe and coincidentally makes perfect sense on a flat earth. So one of the things that really fascinates me about this whole thing is Antarctica. Um, you know, yeah. There's a lot of things that tie into Antarctica, like I said, with the Nazis and Operation High Jump that the treaty that they all signed that there's no independent research to be done in Antarctica. And the fact that you mentioned earlier that you can't go past a certain point. Why, why isn't like an independent pilot trying to fly down there? Like if I were to go and buy a, 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 a say I'm a millionaire up oh, there, you go. I lost myself. I'm dead. <sighs> I guess I'll answer his question or should there, I wait one to do another there, question? There we go. So, so, so say I was a, a millionaire and I could afford to get yeah. a really nice plane and I got my own pilot's license because that's something that I would enjoy okay. doing is getting a pilot's license if I had the money to do so. What stops yep. me from flying down to Antarctica and going past the point where they don't want us to? Where are you going to get fuel? Yeah, that's, how are you gonna that's, true. that's true. That, I didn't even think we're going to fuel and how are you going to navigate GPS doesn't work down there and neither do compasses. If the earth was a ball, like they tell us with a magnetic core, 
uh, compasses would point to the south very strongly down there, but they don't. The magnetic declination in some of the points in Antarctica is 170 degrees, which means- Have you been down there? I have not, but we are working with a TV show that's going to take us down there. We're okay. gonna, we want to go to the South Pole. So, so you're speculating that, that a magnet doesn't work down there? No, no. We have lots of people with videos, people that have been there, um, and they videoed it, how, magne how, they, how it doesn't work. But you don't even have to do that. Just go on a magnetic declination map. And there's points in south in, in down there that say the magnetic declination is 170. So like he, in Texas, the magnetic declination is like five degrees, which means or whatever. I'm not sure where, mm. but five degrees means so you, you point north and then true north is five degrees off of that. Not too bad. OK, so that's weird. But in some places in, in Antarctica, on the sh right near the shoreline, the magnetic declination is like 170 degrees. So north is that way. The compass says it's that way, but it's really that way. Okay, that's insanity. Yeah, it makes no sense. Completely opposite. What? Completely opposite. Makes no sense. Here's one for you: rockets and NASA shoots up, and all of the other fake space agencies curve right out and go over the ocean. Mm -hmm. This is a rocket that was shot up in Arizona. Pay attention, Nick. Paying attention. I'm looking at the I'm looking at the globe right here, thinking about being really far down south. Yeah, yeah. So, so this will help you with the globe. Yeah. At 73 miles, this hit something. It went kerplunk, like it went into water or something viscous. I'm not saying what it was. Yeah. That's not the point of this. The point is, this thing went straight up. It gave us an uninterrupted view, unlike NASA's, you know, 15 edits within the first 30 seconds of a rocket launch. And all of a sudden, we saw the moon. This is the moon. Okay, we zoomed in on it. It's the moon. Okay, besides the Earth looking flat, which this isn't even about. We saw the moon, but the moon was over Australia. So we're on that globe. This rocket is like a half a millimeter off the globe off of Arizona. So put your finger on Arizona, Nick, on the globe. Put your finger on Arizona. All right. All right, I'm on it. All right. And now the moon is over Australia. Could you see the moon? Of course not. You'd have to look straight through the globe. But we could see the moon here. So the only explanation is that the earth is flat. How do you know that's Australia? And how do you know that's uh, Arizona? No, this is Arizona. This is Arizona. Where the people and we know the date, the, the time when this was launched. And you look on timeofdate.com, it shows the moon directly over Australia. Another telling thing, why, why don't I see any stars here? Well, people I always will, thought that will was say weird. that's the aperture. They'll say, you know, aperture, whatever. But so, you know, real, real NASA quick, can't I... get any photos of stars because of the aperture. But I can take my iPhone underneath a friggin' street light and look up and see stars beyond the street light. Don't say aperture, right? Because that's just a friggin' word and a dumb excuse. Now, you, you said, uh, the, go back to the, what you talked about, north being off by so many, so many degrees when you're in Antarctica, right? What was that? How many degrees yeah, off so is the north? Magnetic declination yeah. is 170 degrees in some places in Antarctica. So would that also hold true if I was north trying to find true south? No. Compasses work perfectly in the north. No problems. None. So why why would it know. why would it work perfectly in the north? If you're on a because if you're if you're on a globe, right? If I'm here, whatever whatever the opposite should take place up here. Then if there's if the the magnetic core of the earth is the same throughout the whole entire circle if i'm here it should it should you should uh, have yeah. you should have equal things at equal latitudes yeah but that's not how it works here's the north right this is the north pole it's a magnetic mountain let's say I, I i believe it's a mountain but it's a magnetic attraction to the center and this compass always has to point to it so i'm dead reckoning east or west but east and west are circles as i showed you on the, on the on the app but this will prove to you that east and west are circles. So you can go all the way around dead reckoning 90 degrees or 270 and end up right back where you started from. Some people will claim that that's a proof that they live on a ball, but are you really just circling the lake? But if you try to dead reckon in a straight line and not correct your course within a short distance, you're heading south, right? That needle has to point towards the center. He's heading south right now. That's south. That's south because he didn't co keep correcting to the north, right? So here, here's the thing. On a ball below the equator, you'd have to correct to the south. 
but there's Navy ship captains that say that when they're trying to dead wreck in 90 degrees, even in the Indian Ocean, they always have to correct to the north. And that proves that that shows that the earth is flat or there's a really bad current and the rudders, you know, the rudders bent. But you can also, if you now going south, you just go south and you just keep on going and go away. If I go south, I'm just going to go away, 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 and I'm not going to pop up on the other side. I'm just going to keep going away. Get it? Yeah, I get it. It's, it's a lot to take in. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, so here's the thing the globe has a huge advantage over flat earth it's easy i believe in the globe let's go drink some beers i'm right th listen i'm right there with you because i i I've, i'm a free thinker and that's what we kind of brought the start of the show for was to ask <laughs> yeah. these questions and find the truth um right and so I've, can, go ahead nick orbiting planets in, in the sun and the earth and it spins and the moon and all the planets that orbit and circulate right they no. go in circles, correct? No. Well, they they well not necessarily. Uh, the, they they do circle around. Um, the I don't know the motions of the planets that well, but uh, they do. The I know that the stars circle around, the sun and the moon circle around. I I think that the the planets make circles too, but the, the, they might do some little loop de loops like spirographs. I don't know. I've, so, I've, I'm, I haven't really studied that a lot, so I don't want to speak out of turn. Because there, I was, I was, something popped up when I was researching some videos about Neptune and Uranus and how there was a problem with Uranus and the way it would, um, it would rotate. There was irregularities in the rotation of Uranus, and they found out there, because of the irregularities, there had to be some kind of planet a little beyond it. To, yeah, to, so, so have you ever seen that irregularity? Or are you listening to the liars at NASA tell you there's an irregularity? Well, that's oh, I'm thing. just yeah. Nick, Nick doesn't understand that NASA is is a pile of hot so, garbage. So, like so let so Nick, if I show you that NASA's faking space just once, will that be enough to unwind it all the way to that we didn't go to the moon? I mean, if they're oh, lying, sure. if they're liars, they're liars. So mm -hmm. a liar's a liar, yeah. Yeah, on the on the space station. Um, well, here here's the here's the old one. This is the first spacewalk. Watch his helmet. Okay, now his helmet shouldn't pivot. Because his head turns inside the helmet, but when he turns, this is a claymation dummy. Okay, watch. I'm going to zoom in, right? Watch when he turns his head. The whole thing turns. This is a doll. Yeah, this isn't a human floating in space. Okay, that's crazy. That's it, nonsense. I'm not so so speaking here, th this ISS, right? Because this is a question yeah. I wanted to ask you about a girl that uh, that we work with. She took a picture with a nice camera and she caught the ISS passing in front of the moon. The moon. So now the sun on the moon, right. Are you saying that that was like a, would you call them a, a satellite? No. Well, that's a part, that's a parlor trick from NASA. That's a new, uh, a, a newer thing that they give you the coordinates and the times when, uh, when uh, the space station will be transiting the sun or the moon, but just like an eclipse, you don't ever see it approaching or exiting you just see it for the one and a half seconds that it's crossing the face and if you look at it the the shape of it it kind of looks like it doesn't look like the real shape. it looks like an h but not like what the space station should really look like but again if you if you look at the chart of where you'll be able to see it it shows like all right it's coming across connecticut you can see it all across connecticut and then it's going into new york and then all of a sudden it stops and the person a mile away won't ever get to see it. It just stops. Like if it was doing what it's orbiting, that line should always be continuous where it's going, where people can see it. <clears throat> and it's it's because it's a parlor trick. It's some sort of, sort of airplane with either a wearable hologram or just, or, you know, with H shaped wings on it. And it flies a certain course and lets people take a picture of it. And they believe they're seeing the space station. But here's the problem. You couldn't see it. So uh, physically, I can prove this. So, so if you look at a 747, a 747 is gigantic. You know, you stand next to the wheel. <laughs> I think the wheels are six feet tall. They're giant, right? You're a tiny person next to this thing. Move it up to cruising altitude. You can't even see the plane, right? If it wasn't no. for the trail, you probably wouldn't have seen it, right? You with me? Yeah, I'm yeah. with you. Yeah. yeah. 
How, how, yeah. And how would you? So, so wait, hold on, hold on. So if I doubled that height, of course you couldn't see it. And you can probably not see it because it's angular size would be so small that you just couldn't see it. Your eye can't resolve anything that small. Well, the space station is 50, five zero times higher. And it's about the same size. It's 50 times higher. And we can see it with our naked eye, impossible. Satellites are even farther and smaller. And we can see those with our naked eye, provably impossible. So I saw you playing that, uh, a video behind you with the guys in the space station. That's something that I've seen and something that I've showed people of them floating around with harnesses. Um, yeah, so th they were doing uh, this little flippity flip with their little CGI hat. And all of a sudden, the sky floats by in the back. So I zoomed in on it because he was way far away. And you can see that the green screen didn't take out his harness and the wires. He's hanging from wires, just floating by. And, and these guys were in good. No, because because I know Na NASA has been caught multiple times showing CGI mm -hmm. photos like they've they've been caught everything. Everything they show is fake. They've yeah. never been to space, not a space agency, NASA not a speed that's that's pretty good uh <laughs> but so <laughs> so so, so, so see I, this hat he's flipping around here see this little hat that hat isn't really there that is a a uh, um augmented reality virtual object that he's playing with and he goes to pat he's supposed to pass it to this guy but he he thought it was passing it and he grabbed it and he put it away and then it's just repeating he mistaken and if you watch his face he's looking at the monitor going oh fuck i missed it right this happens yeah. all the time with these guys right the guy's face almost looks like yeah cgi the guy on the left yeah. in green so almost... look watch his eyes watch his eyes he's like oh shit. oh shit oh shit i screwed up i screwed up right check this out watch this thing right here you can see it through his head he's being faded in this guy is floating on a zero g plane but there are no left hand or right hand oh. turns. So they're literally fading him in, right? Watch this, virtual reality. Watch over, over here. Anything here? Oh, look, all of a sudden there it is. That is not a real object. These things that she's playing with are virtual reality. They're augmented reality. They're, they're literally, um, it's simple technology. She's looking either through contact lenses that are showing her or she's looking at a screen and she's manipulating these objects in real time. What do they say when people come out with these videos? They don't say anything. They will never ever respond to any of us, right? Here's Don Pettit, the only guy that thinks he went to space because he's actually retarded. He's <laughs> drinking coffee out of, <laughs> out of a plastic container showing how the coffee sticks to the side, but watch what happens. The coffee gets out of sync with the container, okay? <laughs> It's all digital. It's all digital. Wow. It's all digital bullshit. Ready? Here's one. Chris Hatfield singing. This guy is miking him, but they're in different rooms, right? They're in different rooms. And he misplaces the where Chris is, and he sticks the microphone right into his neck. Okay? Oh, that's the guy that's it's inside of Chris's neck. Yeah. Oh, wow, it is. It's like in his head. Yeah. yeah. And, he, and the guy like freaked out. He didn't know what to do. And, you know, and this was supposedly live. I think it was live, but they did it in this green screen room. It, it's, it's unbelievable. And that's the guy, that's um, the same guy that has pictures of him with uh, like a, a, it's an ounce so of weed. E Nick, it's so easy to deceive you. Like when you look down, they show the earth. Nick, why can't we see any, any, any land here? This is obviously from the space station. Well, um, that shot just has to be on the ocean. It does. It has to be on the ocean. Yeah. Or yeah. am I totally deceiving you? And this was taken in somebody's front yard and just turned upside down. Okay. That's how easy it is to deceive. Wow. This was literally, yeah. That's what they should, they show us. They always show us a little something. And what is this? Is this a balloon, a blimp, or is this 40,000 pounds of steel falling through the sky uh looks like i don't a, know what the fuck that is looks well like a, a here a so dildo well this is supposedly the external tank from the challenger 
This is this is gigantic, right? It's uh -huh. a helium balloon. Watch, you're going to see a piece of paper fly by it in a second. This is 40,000 pounds. It should be falling pretty damn fast. Watch, a little piece of paper is going to fly right over here. Give it a second. And there it goes. See the piece of paper? And yeah. there'll be another one coming over here. So this is showing you that this is just floating in the sky, right? This is just floating in the sky. And they're just filming it as if it's falling. And, they, and they're just... filming it to telling you that they're orbiting. They're supposedly going 17,000 miles an hour. And that this thing is falling to the earth. And it's going to get so hot that it's going to burn up and vaporize. It's 40,000 pounds of steel. And it just falls out of right? the sky. What, so what, this what is it... a blimp. A blimp. Right? The, the space shuttle, when it took off, this is the space shuttle. Watch, a little wind. It's a bouncy house. Okay? This is four million pounds on the on the on the um, tarmac, and it's blowing around like a bouncy house down in Florida. That's why the space shuttle goes up and it turns on its back because the helium external tank is lighter than the other balloon. So then, when they Crazy, drop right? it off, when they drop it off, watch. you say it. They watch. It's a balloon. This is a rocket-assisted balloon. And this helium tank is lighter than this balloon, right? That just can't and, be forced from that rocket pulling it up. No, no, because it's a balloon. No one's ever been on one of those. No person has ever been on it. What about the Challenger astronauts? Is that what you're going to say? I was just going to ask that. What about those guys? So <laughs> we won't say too much about them, but we found I've seen this people that look like them, sound like them have the same exact name as them and the same birthday. And they claim that they're not that person. And some of them claim that they're the, their identical twin, even though there's no record of them having an identical twin. And the identical twin never showed up or spoke at their funerals. That's, yeah, that's really wild. And it's, 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 it's a classic trick that they do. They, they do these tricks all of the time. Like people don't even realize... Right. Like in 1962 with Operation Northwoods, they were planning a false right. flag event and they were going to fake uh, an explosion and fly the passengers to an Air Force base and let them off and go, right. and go on to live. What about life. these guys? Did these guys just do the first thing, the first three guys to go to the moon, have a good time, come back and survive? Or did their dog just die? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do look pretty uh, somber, a little sad yeah um yeah so then what would you so buzz aldrin i know he is he's punched a couple guys for for saying that space is fake and the moon landing yeah. is so nonsense. um so was it buzz um david Na nano rodriguez a famous boxer i, yeah. I was on his show I'm familiar with him and he uh he said that he um he saw buzz aldrin at an event and he got him alone for a minute and he goes hey buzz i know you guys never went to the moon What's up with that? And Buzz looked at him, smiled, patted him on the back, and goes, "You're a smart kid." And he walks away. Well, and you look at those old old photos that they try to tell us. It's it's clearly a yeah. a, a set. Um, and also Neil Neil Armstrong, um, I think it was Neil Neil Neil. It was Neil, yeah. That um, um, I, I forget I forget who it was. Some you know some researcher guy, um. I'm spacing on his name. The guy that is in charge of, uh, I forget, D D Richard, David Gre Greer, Richard Greer, Richard Greer, Richard Greer, whatever. Sounds familiar, yeah. What? Oh, so maybe it wasn't Richard Greer, but it doesn't matter. He wanted to interview him. He contacted him through a known associate and the, and the, um, he gave them a, a message saying, if I grant you this interview, they'll kill me and my family. And then he, he never did it. Buzz, was it Buzz? Was it Buzz or uh, it was Neil Armstrong? I think he said, "If I grant you this interview, they'll kill my whole me and my whole family." Well, I always found it fascinating that uh, Richard Nixon was calling from like a landline telephone in the '60s, all the way to right. the moon, and per talking perfectly clear and without <laughs> without any delay. And then in uh, 2000 and whatever, when they did the Red Bull jump, they pretty much lost communication before he got to 120,000 feet.
they literally could barely reach them at 120,000 feet. I, I've, right? I've and think it. about this. Think, think about this. So this is the Earth, right? And mm -hmm. the Earth is spinning to the east, okay? So he went up for three and a half hours. It's spinning. So he should land out west. You know, it's spinning at a thousand miles an hour. So he should land west, you know, a thousand of miles. He should, no, a, thousand, a thousand miles an hour. He's up there for three hours. He should be like 3,000 miles out in the ocean. But he landed, it's spinning east and he landed east of where he took off. How did he outrun the spin of the earth when he was up but in space? If, if he's moving at that fast when he was on the ground, wouldn't he traject also a thousand miles an hour coming up for a certain point? Well, the, at that height, he'd have to actually gain speed to keep up with the earth because that's a bigger circle than the circle of the earth. Yeah, he'd have to bit. gain speed. And you know what? At 45, 40 or 45,000 feet, there's winds that are outrunning the earth by two to 300 miles an hour. The earth is spinning and there's winds up there that are outrunning the earth in the same direction. So 1,300 miles an hour, these winds. Well, uh, uh, um, according to, yeah, a spot in space, sure. Three, about two to 300 miles an hour according to the surface of the earth. So well, one thing I wanted to ask you in regards to space. So we have these telescopes that are out there, say like Hubble, and I think that there was a new one. So what is it that they are actually looking at looking into in your opinion so yeah so what they're looking into is nothing because they don't exist this is a friggin soda can wrapped in tin foil that nasa is telling us is the, the the hubble this is actually the hubble they tell us but think about this the telescope on earth the big telescopes that do these time lapse deep space pictures they're built on gigantic cement pads i was watching a, a nova show on it and the pads have to be like eight, 10 feet thick concrete um, because they can't have the slightest vibration because the slightest vibration could ruin one of the deep space shots because the light coming in is so weak. It's so far, yeah. How can you worry about the vibration when the earth is fucking spinning at a thousand miles an hour and moving in four other directions at all these speeds. How can this thing that's falling around, the earth is moving in all those, all those directions and this thing's going an additional 17,000 miles an hour for around the earth. How could the tiniest vibration even matter? This thing's moving in five directions at once and they're worried about the vibration. The reason that they have those pads for those telescopes is because they can't move. The tiniest motion will ruin the picture. Well, the then with those perfectly. telescopes, you have to have a lot of people at these universities, whatever, that are looking into them. They all have to be looking at something you would think, right? So what are they looking so, at? So absolutely, you would think that. We and uh, one of our guys got um, the head of the Hubble program or one of the top guys there. And he was talking to them about the Hubble images. And there's a, there's a, airplane a 747 that has a telescope built into the side of it called Sophia and this guy knew all about Sophia my guy our guy and um, he was talking to this guy about Hubble and he he because he says the pictures that Hubble giving us he goes I think they're from Sophia and the and the Hubble guy admitted that he's never seen Hubble that he's never gotten any confirmation that of his entire life work is he has no proof that Hubble even exists Right, Hubble's in the thermosphere, which is like three thousand degrees. Can you tell me what alloy this is that can handle three thousand degrees? Right, uh, this is nonsense. This but is nonsense. Even, Those even images, Sophia is looking at paintings. something, right? Sophia is looking. Yeah, they're looking towards the outer space. You know, um, I took a picture of the deep field shot, high res picture supposedly of the deep space where there's, you know, every dot is another galaxy and all this stuff. And what I did is I brought it into my movie editor. And I zoomed in on the tiniest little space. And then it did the, um, the Ken Burns effect, just spreading out and, and, and just spread it, you know, spreading out. So basically I put it up, I was, go I was banging heads with some Globers talking that they're saying all of this space video is real. And I showed it to them. I said, this is fake as fuck. And he's like, no man, it's real. It's a time lapse. It's from <laughs> this and that. And basically I just, I, and then I, then I zoomed all the way out and I showed him what it was and I never heard from him again. 
Well, that's the problem with a lot of people. Once they they are told new information that goes against their core beliefs, they refuse to accept it. Cognitive dissonance, pride, whatever it may be. Right. They, they don't want right, to hear right. it. And that's what a lot of we 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 come across those problems a lot in a lot of the rabbit holes that we've covered. And if your show uh, deep inside the rabbit hole used to go down other rabbit holes, I'm sure you've seen it outside of the flat earth but the flat earth gets it from all angles they get it from the conspiracy the quote-unquote conspiracy theorists too yeah so you know the you know we're spinning twirling whirling neil degrasse tyson says that water bulges 14 miles high at the equator because of the spin well that kind of makes sense on a spinning earth but you know we have all of those motions all of that's going on and somehow we have lakes that look like this right zero not a ripple not a slosh how come this isn't sloshing to one side like the equator how come this is a perfect glass lake we're spinning twirling whirling curvature is acceleration you're going a thousand miles an hour in a straight line you could argue that that's not anything but as soon as you start curving that's acceleration so that makes complete sense because if you drive in a car with a bowl full of water the the water is going to be moving everywhere it's going to you make a turn and the water is going to start spilling it's out going to slosh this. right over right across right oh well, the water was big for me too i mean i don't know if you we had this ride on the boardwalk down the shore called gravitron right and so you would go inside this spinning disc and it would spin really really fast and it would push you to the outside and so you'd be like stuck against the, the wall yes right. so in my mind if the earth is spinning a thousand miles an hour wouldn't that push the water out? It wouldn't pull the water. Yeah. Well, they say that the water the bulges. Wall. They say the water bulges at the equator, but you know, they say it bulges 14 miles high. That's taller than Everest. You're flying to the south at five, you know, five miles in the air. At what point do you climb an extra 10 miles just to skim over a hump of water? Right? <laughs> at no point. No. No point. No point. <laughs> so that's that sea fly. level, airplane, not air globe. That's really wild. I didn't even think of that. So if it goes up for so we fly at five miles high, an average commercial. Yeah, about five airline. miles high. Yeah. So say I wanted to go to like Brazil from, from North America, I, the plane would have to climb and then literally be 15, 15 miles in the air and just graze over. Like and just get, skim over a hump that doesn't exist. So if we were like, what country? So somewhere in Central America that we'd right. be able to see planes just like right over our head like i i i have mccarran airport so planes fly right over my head right. all the time i see it regularly but they're landing yeah like it's only a couple miles away so so look right here is the equator mm -hmm. and that's spinning at a thousand miles an hour so if you drew um if i pulled a string around this globe the string is going to be three feet long right whatever it is mm -hmm. okay you with me yep so if i was an inch away from the axis of rotation that's not moving a thousand miles an hour because if i do a string an inch all the way around it's only going to be like three inches you know it's long a short, be a short piece of string so if i'm on a runway a mile from the north pole i'm only moving at like a quarter of a mile an hour if i'm sitting on a runway on Ec in ecuador i'm moving a thousand miles an hour if I took off from the North Pole on an airplane, I sped up to 500 miles an hour and I flew to Ecuador and I wanted to land on a runway that was oriented north-south. This runway is moving sideways at a thousand miles an hour. How the fuck am I gonna land on it? That's a good fucking question, actually. I never thought of that. That's, that's insane. What? So, wait now don't pilots train as though we live on a flat plane is that yeah true? all the manuals say treat the earth as a flat non-rotating plane cia manuals all sorts of stuff there's tons of documents and again um on the uh, on the flat earth app under question marks on about what about pilots we have testimony from pilots we have all the the release doc the release documents um the do you know that NASA is in charge of all long distance plane routes? Is it really? NASA. What? They're in charge of flight plans for all long distance plane routes. So like from here to Australia, 
are here to tie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I had a very a- weird plane route. I mean, I had to fly to Singapore from New Jersey. And when you had your the map up of the, the flat plane, we flew yep. not how I thought we were going to. And then right before we took off, they actually announced a change of the flight path. We left from New Jersey and then we flew up towards Alaska. And then we came down right. um, to ha- Hong Kong Look. and then we connected. Yeah. Look, damn, straight line. That's really yeah, that's wild. that that's why it, it hit me when you had that up. I was like, oh shit. Because I remember so that, we flew to Alaska yeah. and then down. I was like, wow. So yeah. that which which I mean technically it would be south based on what you're saying, but how would you, we we how would we take a flight to Antarctica from the United States? Like say, like I know a Every, lot of politicians. Here if you want to go, go to Antarctica, get on an airplane and don't turn the wheel and you'll end up in Antarctica. Any direction you want will, will take you to Antarctica. So it's all every straight us. line. Every straight line is south. Now, would that not fall into the bucket of works in a globe and works on a no. plane? No, no, because on the equator, if you're on the equator um, and you went straight on a ball, you would stay on the equator, right? But on a flat earth, if you're on the equator, which is right here, straight line, I can't, I, I, it would bring you over to Antarctica. Every straight line would bring you to Antarctica, no matter which way you, which way you go. Every straight line. Oh, so you're saying every straight line. So what I'm thinking, every I guess, straight line. So like, if south. I want to go, look, from here, I can go north, 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 north. I'm going, now I'm going south. I didn't change yeah. directions. I'm just going in a straight line. And now, I'm, boom, I'm, I'm there. Every, every direction from the North Pole is south, south, right? South, yeah. Uh, yeah. south. Every straight line ends up going south. So then Antarctica is all around us. So it's a massive massive antarctica land. yeah so captain cook tried to circumnavigate antarctica right so and so i want to cut you off real so, quick you want to hear a wild story not a well, quick yeah. wild story captain cook yeah his grandson was my next door neighbor nice yeah <laughs> so i want to ask him some questions so thirteen thousand miles this is thirteen thousand miles uh captain cook tried to circumnavigate it took him three and a half years and he went like 60 or 80,000 miles. And I don't even think he finished because this is a much bigger circle than the equator, which is a 24,000 miles around. So then is there even any such thing as the equator? The equator is just the center line. It's not a, it's not nothing physical. It's just a center line halfway between the center and halfway between Antarctica. Now that is something that is the same on the ball and the flat earth. And it can be semi-measured because you're flying, you know, you're flying along the equator, but measuring distance in an airplane, uh, you can only do it um, because of GPS, you know, when you're not flying over land and, uh, and NASA, NASA runs that. But here, here let's, let's look at a photo um, <clears throat> from NASA. So NASA has basically two images of Earth that are, uh, completely ridiculous and make no sense once you actually look at them. So one of them is the blue marble and the other one was taken a few years later. So one, look at the United States mm-hmm. and look at the United States. Right? These are supposedly two photos, right? That's ridiculous. But let's look at this one. This one, this is something we can measure. We can drive across Mexico. We could take a boat that goes, you know, 30 miles an hour across this inlet. And then we could drive across Baja and we could firmly say this is 93, 934 miles. Yeah, definitively. Definitively, yeah. Definitively. They tell us that NASA tells us that the diameter of the Earth is 9,700, 7,917 miles. So we should be able to fit eight and a half of these in between these two lines. But eight and a half of those doesn't even fit on this page. No, you could barely, okay? you could barely fit three across the... Across so the either this is a painting, NASA's full of shit, or the Earth is a quarter of the size they say it is and half the continents don't exist. You think half the continents don't exist? Like No, I'm saying those are your two choices. Oh, oh. It's a painting, NASA's lying. <laughs> 
Yeah, no, there's no way you could fit the rest of Russia, Nick, Europe. They, they deceive us so easy. Nick, what planet is this? I, the pictures are in the way. Uh, could we you be can't in... see the picture? You can't see it? My, you can my... move, move those, move those right. uh, things down. I just said that. All right. Oh, there we go. All right, go ahead. What planet is that? Hey. Neptune? Anybody? Uh, looks like Jupiter. Jupiter, I'd say, maybe. Yeah. Actually, it's a meadow with ducks. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I see you now. I'm just saying, duck hunting there. It's so easy to deceive people. <laughs> it's so freaking easy. So then what, right? what would you say? How about this? Planet? How about this? This is this is the 2014 picture that everyone has seen. And then in 2016, they go, hey, we filmed, we got pictures of the Northern Lights, which proves that they have a magnetic center also. It proves that Jupiter has a magnetic center. So first, and nobody thinks this is real, but let's just assume it's real. Overlay these two pictures, right? This is supposed to be a gassy, you know, ball of, of ever-changing clouds, but every single cloud is exactly the same. This one's just a little darker. See this little dot right here, right? There it is. Every uh, yep. single thing, you overlay them, there's nothing that has changed. But meanwhile, NASA, you know, has shown us this as a time lapse over just a couple of hours or days, but somehow two and a half years apart, every cloud is the same. So you have two choices. Clouds don't change on a windy, stormy planet or NASA's full of shit. Actually, you have two choices. NASA's full of shit or NASA's full of shit. The other one doesn't even count anymore. No, I, I agree with you on NASA's full of shit. Um, it, Did we go so over this yet? No. No, no, yeah, but right. yeah, let's do so it. So if the Earth is flat, how come we can't see Mount Everest? Here's the loser France, and out here is Mount Canigou, okay? Well, Mount Canigou is 175 miles away, and if you use the Earth curve calculator uh, from this elevation and that distance, the top of Mount Canigou would be a mile below the curvature, so therefore, that's why we can't see it. Earth must be a globe, right? Mm -hmm. But on two days a year, when the sun's migrating in between the tropics, it lines up with this viewing spot and Mount Kanagu. And as it goes beyond it, all of a sudden, it looks like clouds, but wait a minute. Yeah, you look at this, this is the exact outline of Mount Kanagu. The very top right here should be a mile below this curve, but we can see the entire mountain. It's here. So I've seen videos of like oil rigs nine miles out and based on, based on the curvature, that should be impossible. It should be well, no, you can see the oil rig, but what you can't see is, is the, this camera is at one foot off the ground at one foot off the ground. Ball math tells you that the horizon should be 1.2 miles away. Mm -hmm. Right. But this is, there should be 59 feet of curvature, but not only, <laughs> Can we see the water surface here? We can see it for tens of miles beyond it. So there should be hundreds of feet of curvature. Yeah, and you shouldn't be able to see that far at all. In, in the app, there's a curve calculator. So when you go to the beach, get yourself a super zoom camera, tripod, uh, say, hey, I can figure out how far that buoy is or how far that island is, and then zoom in on it and look at the calculator and it'll tell you how uh, what how much of it should be behind curvature and and you'll see it it'll be right there. So then, what is what what are the planets? Then are they are they real or are they just nonsense? Do they do planets even exist? So they used to be called wandering stars. Uh -huh. uh, they they circle around. They're all named after gods. Mm -hmm. um, they're sentient in nature. So this is this is the star Arcturus. Does that look like a burning ball of hydrogen? You know, yeah. trillions of miles like away. Light. Well, this is the star Arcturus, and this is Sirius. There's all sorts of geometric patterns in there. Wow. This is Capella. Okay. These are within the Earth system. These, uh, if you ask me, Crazy Dave, I think stars are souls and the moon delivers and removes souls on our planet. That's why it's tied to women's reproductive cycles. Don't ask me how or what or where or how or who, <laughs> but don't ask me any of that. 
But <clears throat> I think that, you know, this realm, we're here having this soul's experience. And we're here to have an experience. It's kind of like an amusement park. I agree with when that. When you align with your soul, you have a good time. But when you are separated, when someone steals your mind because it puts it in a prison and then it fills you with fear and you watch CNN or Fox or any of those stations, Garbage. you literally lose control of your soul when our whole goal is to maintain control of our soul. Well, speaking of souls and with what we're talking about now, so Middle Ages, let's say, I don't know if it was like 1400s or whatever, it was understood that the earth was flat and it was heretical. Can you hear me? Yeah, cool story, bro. <laughs> no, no, but what I'm saying, it was heretical then to think that it was a globe, right? And now we're in basically the complete opposite where it's heretical then to think that it's flat. So what was the sense in, in that flip back then? Well, I don't believe the flip happened then. I believe the flip happened less than 100 years ago. I was interviewing a 102-year-old woman named Ruth in February of 2020. And uh, I was interviewing her about the World's Fairs. And she had such a great memory of her fifth birthday party she was telling me about. And uh, so I asked her, I said, what did they teach you? Where did you go to school? In elementary school. And she knew the in Connecticut, the street that it was on, the name of the school, the teachers, kids in her class. I said, what did they teach you in science class? And I had never mentioned any of this to her. And she goes, what did they teach you in, in, about the earth in science class? And she goes, they taught me the earth was flat. And, and so then we did more research and we found newspaper articles that were persecuting teachers in, in the early 1900s for trying to introduce heliocentrism into the school system. We found in Croatia, all of the schools taught in that the earth was flat in the 1930s. So this hijacking of our reality happened in the early 1900s. And uh, it's when the, there was some sort of, let's call it a great reset that happened. And uh, they, they literally hijacked our minds. So now every, the stories with Galileo, all that, just, just that, they're just stories? Yep. Folk tales. Lauren, they do that all the time. You, you, you look at Nikola Tesla and they just bury all of his research and everything that, that he did. And they you don't look at you the Tartarian buildings that are here that were supposedly built in the 1800s, 1700s, when we had horses and buggies. We couldn't build some of these buildings that still exist today. They're everywhere with these towers and domes on them. We couldn't build them today with no. our giant cranes, but we're supposed to believe that they did it with horses and buggies. It, it's, it's literally people's brains are so lazy. It's because they're fluoridated, they're vaccinated, they're poisoned. They can't think. And school is an indoctrination program. The only way to get good grades in school is memorize and regurgitate. Yep. Okay. If you come up with a different idea, you don't get an A. Well, John right? D you get it. You get sent to the principal's office. John D. Rockefeller's famous quote is, I don't want a nation of thinkers. I want a nation of workers. And that's what he's the one who designed the modern day school system. Um, so they, they don't want to teach you the truth. I mean, if you go as far back as the Library of Alexandria and what they have in the Vatican, they have tons and tons of information, miles of books that they don't want us to see or read. Why is that? Absolutely. Absolutely. The Vatican. And have you ever seen the Vatican from an aerial view? It's a friggin' snake. Yep. And they have it's the, a snake. It's a his, giant snake. His uh the, the Pope's uh what's it called? I forget the where he where he actually Serpent Paul or wherever they Yeah, it looks like a serpent. It looks like a serpent. Yeah, it is a serpent with teeth and everything, and it's yeah. got that satanic statue in there. It's insanity what's going on there. They have a, a, a big giant painting of Satan in their basement. Yeah, they have tons yeah. of satanic and pedophilia type yeah. statues. Like it's disgusting over there. Um, yeah, but it all and it all ties in, and that's why I, I'm so fascinated with this rabbit hole because it ties into a lot of the rabbit holes that we've known and and been going down for a long time. It's just something that I never really found importance in. I I you know I never really was like oh let me you know. I don't, you know, let's find out if the globe, if it's a globe or a flat earth, like it never really, 
only time I really heard about it was like Eddie Bravo on Joe yeah. Rogan's podcast. You know Eddie well, Bravo? Me and Eddie, Eddie, Eddie and I talk often. Yeah. Okay. Eddie, Eddie is Eddie gets it, and uh, you know Joe Rogan is a total sellout shell, big time, and then yeah, huge. I mean, he was the poster boy for we never went to the moon and we're never going to the moon. He was this guy. Yep. There's no way people went to the moon. There's no way. Then he had Neil deGrasse Tyson on. He got a huge contract for his television show. There's no way that it's a hoax. There's no way. Okay. This guy is a sellout piece of shit. Well, okay? we talk about it all the time. <laughs> we uh, we right? talk about he that said all he'd the time. lie to his mother for the money, and he did. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And we talk about it all the time because me and Nick used to be MMA fighters. So Joe Rogan, uh, we followed for a very long time, well before he was who he is now. Um, yeah. And he totally flip flopped on all of his stance. Like he used to be the go to spot for conspiracy. But he, he didn't even need to do that, though. He, he had enough money where he could get his own server at his house. And make yeah, his right. own show. He's he's controlled, Nick. He's controlled. He, he whether it's a threat he, or here's Howard or Hughes cir- first circumnavigation. He <clears throat> circumnavigated right. the earth. Look at him. He went around the ball. Nope. He just went around the lake. Okay. That's his map. And then wow. it's a circle around the North Pole. That's it. That's all it is. Yeah. So then what do That's you all think- it is? Go ahead. I, I got one. I got one more for you. So the world record for southern north south circumnavigation well wait a minute you can't do that on a on a flat earth but they gave out the guinness book of world record and here's the drought here's the north pole they came down they went all the way down here to santiago they went all the way out here then they turned around and came back and went out here this island out here up up all the way around and that's the world record for north south circumnavigation this is what it looks like on a flat earth, okay? And they got the Guinness Book for World Records. Why didn't, when they went down here, why didn't they continue and pop up over here? The answer is obvious. Because it's not a globe. So it, what about, what about the, have you looked anything into the NORB theory? Because I was looking a little into this. A NORB's world? Yeah. What? Nor, NORB's world. So, um. Uh, is that what you're talking about, Norb's world with the with the outer space? Basically, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, so, it's, so Norb Norb has a, a, a and you know it's very interesting um, that maybe NASA's not lying when they say they want to go to Mars and they want to go to outer space to Mars. You know, we had the Apollo mission, which is the god the son of god, of the godson. Well, the Mars mission might be going to the outer space where Mars is. So. Maybe we have the Apollo and uh, Helios. We have the sun and the moon in here. Well, maybe out here, the sun is Mars and the moon is Venus. Venus has shadow, has phases like our moon does. And so maybe Mars is out here and circling around. So you're saying- And maybe out here, out here is Jupiter and Saturn. Jupiter is a moon and Saturn is a sun. So you're saying outside the the mountain ranges of Antarctica that have us blocked. Yeah, maybe in. they're outside, like in in they all are in their succeeding domes outside. So how, what was that map you had before there, Dave? The one before the screen. This one or this? Is one? that boot? I, I saw something no. saying that there was like an old Buddhist map that had some of those, I guess, extraterrestrial lands if you want to call them on the outside of antarctica this one oh yes yeah that one. it looked just yeah like... yeah that's uh ja- i think that was a japanese map okay. yeah there's there, again we're not allowed out there but there's a there's a video uh there was there was um in the 1950s or something there's a florida magazine and this is something you cannot find a single copy of this magazine. Now, with eBay and the internet, you can find a copy of anything, right? But you can't, for any price, find a copy of any of the Florida magazines where well, there was a series of articles called The Iron Republic. And basically, it was a story about a uh, senator in the 18, late 1800s, early 1900s, who uh, I think it was out of New York. 
he got a he was sick of politics. He got a ship and crew, and he went to Antarctica, and he found a um, a, a fissure. You know, he went through a hole, and ended up lost. They came out in there in the ocean. They were lost for a month, and they came across this other land, maybe over here, or you know, maybe maybe went to here. They came across this other land, and uh, finally a boat came out and greeted them. He's like, hey, where are you? Where are we? And they're like, you're at the Iron Republic. And he's like, what's that? He goes, well, we're land on the other side of Antarctica, about the same distance that you are, you know, from America, um, on the other side. And uh, we we left the the inner world in the 1600s because of the tyranny that was going on. We didn't wanna, you know, we didn't like it. And so it's a whole story about his, his experience there. This was written in the 1950s. He's talking about technologies, computers, and all sorts of stuff that we didn't have back then. So either he was an amazing futurist or maybe he was telling the truth. It's called the, the Iron Republic. And I that believe it's to- on the app under the Antarctica button, there, there's a reading of it. I'll have to check that out because I, I haven't heard that's the first I'm hearing of that. Um and great Antarctica story. Is one of my, Antarctica is one of my favorite rabbit holes. Like I it just fascinates yeah. me that all, all these politicians like John Kerry was there on the night of the 2016 election. Like why are they why are they going down to Antarctica of all places? What's their purpose yep. down there? Why is the treaty signed? Why is there why the, every single country who's been at war with each other, Russia, USA, all of them signed a treaty saying that there's no independent research allowed down here for what reason like if it, there's there's probably a wealth of resources that that yep. countries could use why why would they sign that if they're, especially if they hate each other they're warring countries this map in particular kind of made me think of the hollow earth what so Dave, what, this map that you just had up that you have up now Dave, made me actually think of the hollow earth um, you know, the problem I have with the hollow earth is it's just another rabbit hole to make you think you live in a heliocentric you know, world. NASA came up with the bullshit story about the moon ringing like a bell, um, but that's NASA. They're liars. So wh- what do you think surrounds us then? Do you think it's like, as you said earlier in that video of the guys from Arizona who shot up that, that rocket, and it hit oh. almost like a, a wall and it was you couldn't really explain what it was but so would you say that there's a dome around us i think there is the dome um you know uh, the first page of the bible in genesis says god separated the waters from the waters and made the firmament uh i i my personal belief is you know we are in this realm there's a more dense realm below us and a more heavenly non-physical realm above us um check out the work of santos Bonacci. He talks about the seven layers and these other, um, he talks about seven layers of reality and um, he has lots of ancient uh, information way, way above where, uh, where I've looked into. Santos Bonacci, he's, he, he, he'll blow your mind. So if that's the case, why hasn't anybody had even taken a GoPro, even though it's a fisheye lens and sent it up to hit, actually hit that dome? We did. We did. I showed you the video already, didn't I? Yeah, you yeah, showed us, yeah. but but you couldn't hear it. It just looked like yeah. Well, that's I don't have sound. I can't run sound on here. No, but, yeah, um, yeah. It, it just uh, look up. Uh, just look up. Uh, Go fast rocket hits dome. There's a bunch of videos. And it, what is it? Go just, fast rocket it just, hits it just, dome. It just deflects into a different direction when it hits it. No, it go, it's going, going, and it goes. It's spinning really fast, and it goes, plunk. It's just like like the sound of a stone, a smooth stone being dropped into a pond. Uh huh. Okay. It makes like a plunk noise, and then it stops spinning. Now, some people say there's a some crazy yo-yo de-spin, but the deceleration and the stop of spinning and the sound. And the weird way it started floating all of a sudden yeah. was too weird. Well, why wouldn't it explode if it hit that? Like, why wouldn't the rock? Well, if it hit water, it would. that would be pretty hard. You know, you hit water at a high speed, you know, it hurts. Yeah. Um, I don't think it was water. I think it was just a thicker medium. Maybe it was plasma. Don't know. I really, I, 
don't know because I can't get up that high. But, you know, think about this. When it, we're, we're only taught about secondary water, which is evaporation, condensation, and precipitation. And that's not the main water on our world. The main water on our world is called primary water. And primary water is be deep below the land. Gaddafi found it. And he, he created the great man-made river system. And he was pumping water all over Africa before they took him out. But yep. I believe that's connected to the waters above. It's un unlimited, infinite, pristine water, right? And they don't want us to know about it. Like in California, you're not allowed to dig a well deeper than 300 feet because if you do, you'll hit you'll hit primary water, and then they won't be able to control you. They control us with water, food, electricity, fuel, and uh, that's basically it. You know, and money. That's why, that's why they're pushing climate control because they want to tax us on our air. They want to control us through. Right. If they can control our water and our air, they control every single human being in the world. Um, yeah. And that's why they're trying to. Taxes so like when we have, you know, if you've ever flown through a big cumulus cloud, it's no big deal. It's like the plane barely gets wet. It gets damp, but it's not like you're flying through millions of tons of water. If you've been in a hurricane or, you know, a heavy, heavy downpour, there's rivers of water coming out of the sky. Where is that water coming from? Where are those trillions of pounds of water coming from? Were they floating in the cloud? I don't think so. But when does water come? When do we get heavy rain? We have really low pressure. The lower the pressure, the more rain we get. A hurricane, super low pressure. Rivers of water. I don't know if you've ever been in a hurricane, but there's literally rivers of water coming out of the sky and the wind is sorting it out. I think the low pressure is allowing the water coming to come in from that literally from that other realm above us. And so the low pressure lets the water in. Well, you could also tie that into into harp and things like that like i i think oh yeah they're fucking with the they're yeah. fucking with all that stuff i know yeah. i know about that yeah. but 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 again you know whether the hurricane's man-made or not it's low pressure that lets yes. the water in whether yeah. they're manipulating that low pressure or not that's a whole nother story i'm with you so that also ties into how how you feel about gravity right uh, one of your other videos well, it was just what you drop is heavier than air or it's lighter than air well gravity is also uh, it's uh it's provable that there is a an electric force. The only true forces are electricity and magnetism. Mm -hmm. The Earth has a measurable negative electric charge, which uh, makes it just attracts things very lightly. It's a very weak force, just like gravity. But on this plate with the Van der Graaff generator, we we uh, gave it an electric charge a little stronger than the Earth, and wood chips and iron chips and human hairs will go up, right? They go up because we're overwhelming what? Gravity or the negative charge of the earth? It's very simple. Well, I'm a big believer in energy being all around us and electricity. Everywhere. It it's actually, everywhere. it's not even, not even a belief. It's measurable. Yeah. A, a meter off the ground is a hundred volts. A two meters off the ground is 200 volts. And it keeps going up from there. A hundred volts a meter. That's insane. I've never seen that where the yeah the wood look that up like that. it's amazing it. and there's free energy everywhere we can suck energy out of the ether that's what all of these old tatarian buildings all of these old things they all had towers and domes this was energy the harvesting right well, these old like churches the you know yeah, well that that too but even old churches and stuff there it's all was energy technology there was a worldwide civilization and uh, that's when everybody knew the earth was flat and, and there was no division, but then something happened. Maybe it was a mud flood and there was a depopulation of the world. And then some evil fuckers have uh, taken over and hijacked our world from us. So we're here and I'm not saying, and I'm not even saying it's a bad thing. Maybe we like, we're all in this. I don't want to call it a video game, but we're all here in this amusement park and Let's say, you know, our soul, we're old souls. We've done this before. Why would you want to just go into a place that's kind of boring? Everyone gets along. Let's go, let's go and, and have a challenge. Shake things up a little bit. Yeah. I mean, if you went into a video game or shoot 'em up video game and nobody shot at you, would you would you keep playing the game? No. No, you'd stop immediately. It'd right. be boring. Um so then with what so with all all the things that nasa tells us being a lie which i can 100 percent get behind what makes you 
just the fact that the flight plan paths show that it's flat or what what makes you think it's it's flat like a disc like how what will like is there it's not a disc again it's not a disc we can see too far so like right here do you see a boat is there any boat out here no no boat no boat but i'm zooming in look what's that a boat, a boat. now did i pull it up over a curve or did i just zoom in on it you zoomed in on it I zoomed in on it. So look, you can see the whole hull. Now I'm going to zoom out just like the boat. It's going away from me and it's going to disappear from the bottom up. Look, the hull's almost gone. It's up to the window. The whole thing's gone. And somebody on the beach would go, well, it went over the curve. It's so far out, it went over the curve. Well, it should have gone out over the curve if you can prove the distance, but that's not what happened. It's angular size. So if I walked around this corner, right? Mm -hmm. If you were standing right here and you had a telescope, could you zoom in and see me again? No, no, no. Could you zoom in on you zoom in on the wall? I mean, if I vision. so if I turn that over, if I went over that 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 hallway, you couldn't zoom in because this hump is blocking your view of me. So yeah. I don't care if you had the Hubble telescope, which is fake. Um, you couldn't zoom in on me, but somehow I was able to zoom in on that boat after it disappears, which proves. It's an optical thing, not a physical thing. The horizon is an optical thing. I mean, I heard you saying that there's some military lasers that point targets 100 miles away. Yeah, 100 miles. There should be 6,000 feet of curvature, 6,600 to be exact, but 100 miles well, away. Six, six, coincidence. Yeah. So, <laughs> so this, this is my sun fade out video. I got this seven times. I watched the sun. It went in five minutes time. It went from there to there. Now, if the earth was spinning, it should just go all the way. It should just go the same speed until it's gone. But it sat there, and this is sped way up. It sat there for 10 minutes. It didn't, it wouldn't go below this line. It sat there for 10 minutes, and then all this is a super clear day. And then all of a sudden, it just disappeared into the thickness. Right? Here it is again. It just disappeared because its light couldn't push through the soup right it's still there it's still light but it's moving away and it the sky is getting less floret fluoresced right the sky is it lights up from the electricity from the sun so the sun's over here it's daylight over here and it's fluorescing the sky so this is daylight sunlight is when you see the sun daylight is the sky and then over here, it's dark. It's nighttime. It's pitch black down here. It's so, day next to night. Day next to night. Right there. This so, is from like uh, about 100,000 feet. Does the sun give the moon its light? That, like, how does, why is the moon so bright on certain nights? And yeah, not so the, the full moon on a clear night will, will uh, light up the sky you know it lights up yeah, everything you absolutely. you can read by it but the sun is supposedly reflecting off of that dusty dirty ball and reflecting all the way back to earth right this is daylight this dusty dirty ball looks this bright from earth right the inverse square law of light says that every time you double the distance of something it gets one quarter of the brightness or every time you half the distance of something it gets four times brighter so I'm here on Earth. I'm away from all the city lights. I could drive down the road by the moonlight. It's bright enough. I could read the newspaper, right? Mm -hmm. Not that you should ever read a newspaper. But, no, you shouldn't. But I agree. It's uh, <laughs> so this is probably like 15, 20 lumens, but let's just say it's one lumen just to mm -hmm. give it every benefit of the doubt, right? If I go halfway to the moon, it's four lumens. If I cut that remaining distance in half, it's 16 lumens. That it's 64 lumens, keep going half and half and half. When I get to a hundred miles from the moon, it's something like 10 million lumens, okay? 10 million lumens would melt your eyeballs. Definitely. Do you remember, this I mean, is 10 million lumens, or this guy's a fucking liar. Yeah, I mean, wow. <laughs> he definitely is a liar. Uh, Cause that looks and, just and, like and, the and, and this is no a, a big shot, but there's spotted clouds it only lights up the ones right near it. All the other ones are dark. If the moon was 238,000 miles away, it would light up all the clouds. So what do you think the moon is then? Cheese. 
<laughs> cheese that gets has his own source of light because yeah, it was the, from the, the moon source. is its own light it's a different kind of light if you magnify moonlight it gets colder that's crazy right don't ask me that? how oh, okay i won't i said that. don't ask me how <laughs> beat me to it you beat too me quick. To it. <laughs> um so if it would be impossible to land on the moon then they wouldn't be able to see anything they wouldn't be able to take that photo if it the was, moon if the moon that. is not a physical place next time the, the right now we're in a going into a new moon this is when i get all the emails on the app like your app's not working there's no moon i'm just like just wait a couple days dude <laughs> there's no moon <laughs> in the sky <laughs> i mean if you study moon patterns we, we were taught there's no moon in the sky so anyway he says that they're an idiot so when there's no moon when the, by the way when the moon goes to new mm -hmm. nobody has ever seen it from an airplane from an infrared telescope during a solar eclipse no one has ever seen it for under in less than 42 hours i think almost two full days okay the earth shine when there's a new moon from the moon's point of view you have a full earth full of sun mm -hmm. it should reflect back like the moon does to us and light up the moon so you can see it but it doesn't no one has ever seen it so i don't think if you remember my eclipse video mm -hmm. did i show the eclipse video here yeah, i've been yeah. in so many interviews i know the, the when there's a new moon the moon has nothing to project there's no light on the moon Therefore, there's nothing to project into our reality. So there's no moon there. So it just shuts off, like, or just disappears? Well, I think it shuts off, yeah. But why do they call it a new moon? Maybe it's a new moon. Maybe it's not the, you know, every month. It, it and, and you know how women's reproductive cycles kind of sync up with the moon? That's where my whole uh, thing with the moon, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of correlation with... Um, births and moon cycles i don't know maybe maybe it has something to do with delivering souls to our avatar meat suits here well why I don't why, know. why does the moon have such an impact on the tides and the oceans and the it waters? doesn't that's a lie there's no correlation to the moon if the moon had an if the full moon you know um made a tide big why doesn't a new moon make the tide big because the moon's still there it's just not lit up what difference does it make if you go um go on my channel and look up the tides playlist the there's tidal nodes all over the earth in different places the tides are crazy the last thing they're tied to is the moon now the moon and the sun do uh there is some correlation for like for some super high tides but i think it has to do with uh <clears throat> with the earth being like a giant battery and the sun and the moon being the anode and cathode of that battery. So they circle over the earth, sending energy here. Uh, the salt water carries the current. That's why the salt water is the only thing that has tides. And the land is the salt bridge of the battery. There's a channel called LC King, LC King. Um, go watch some of his Earth Galvanic battery videos. I'll definitely you check think that you're out. thinking hard now. Wait till you see those. <laughs> yeah, you're about to mind fuck me even further because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is so much. Uh, it's it's really wild to me because from our perspective, from from our seat, we've been going. Like I said, we've been going down rabbit holes for a very long time. So for me, it's not hard to believe that this is very real and there's a lot of validity and a lot of there there, there you make a, a lot of not really, about believing it's about knowing well yeah it's 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 very easy to, to 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 see this and see it being real now for the average person i call them the normies they just refuse to take any new information in and accept it and i know i, I i've heard you say you never go and talk to your friends about <laughs> flat earth because they'll think that you're crazy, which my friends already think that I'm crazy. I I I, I talk to everybody about it. There's so nobody I don't talk to about it. What what <laughs> what what's the best way to approach somebody who is considered a nor who who doesn't even believe that, that 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 the China virus is nonsense or doesn't believe that uh, the election was rigged? They don't believe any of that nonsense. They they just think that the media is telling us the truth and they're just asleep at the wheel. How do you approach those people or do you just completely ignore them to begin with? 
Well, there's some people that, that, that will never wake up and uh, you it's not your job to wake them up. But what I do is, uh, well, for me, I, I'm lucky because I'm so out there. I go out anywhere, I don't say anything and people always bring it up. Once they bring it up, that's when you have your opening. Mm -hmm. right? You can't give a kid advice unless they ask for advice, right? So you really can't give anybody anything until they ask. So for me, they're always, they'll make a joke or something and then I'll throw it back at them. I'll just, they throw me a question and I just throw the question right back at them in a, in a different form. So what I, what I do is I tell people, get the app, watch the daily video every day. There's short ones during the week. During the week, it's like you find a good short one, send it to your buddy, go, hey, what do you think of this? Right, and that's it. Don't say anything else because then it plants a seed and they can't mm -hmm. get rid of it. You're literally going to infect them with what I call the flat earth fungus. Okay. <laughs> Once it's in, you can't get rid of it <laughs> unless you get a lobotomy. Yeah. Unless you, yeah, for real. Um, it's no, cause that's, that's where I'm at right now. That's literally where I'm at. Like before going into this, I was always like, all right, it's most likely a globe. I don't believe what NASA is telling me, but based on the video evidence of, you know, and I never even thought about a, 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 a camera lens being curved. You know, I knew. Yeah, go, go, go in the app and click the what about NASA button, All right? Bring some food and water, watch those videos. Mm -hmm. And what the, what the app does, you'll watch a video like you say, hey, Dave, send me something on the fake moon landing. I'd send it to you. And then the YouTube would autoplay a propaganda piece right after it and just yes. feed you all propaganda. Mm -hmm. And they'd suggest it. But you go on the app, you play the video, the next video, will be one of my videos and next one will be one of my videos right not not in the mind all of us together but I, I i i make it so the app only feeds you the good stuff and then make up your own mind okay i'm just gonna show you look this is how they're faking it and then you can go oh huh i could see that now because sometimes you just don't see people people just like to believe because belief is easy it takes zero effort zero thought yeah spoon fed information Zero risk. we we deal with that on a regular basis and we get called crazy we're lunatic conspiracy theorists even nick our resident normies like yo you guys are, are nuts and <laughs> yeah you know what i've been screaming about freaking chemtrails for fucking decades and mm -hmm. uh, everyone said i was crazy now they admit it now yeah. fucking they harvard admits that they're spraying the fucking skies yep and and people are like well people just short circuit they don't care right I was screaming about the the PCR test being bullshit and false positives getting banned on Facebook and fucking strikes on YouTube. <laughs> and now the CDC came out going, the PCR test is bullshit. Uh, same thing with HCQ. They were saying it's nonsense. And now they're coming out and saying, oh, it's going to save tons and tons of lives using this medication. Like they, they, yeah. they do it all the time. And, and people have such short term memories. They, they have pea brains, I say. They forget right. information that they saw with their own eyes, literally a month prior a week prior and it's just totally out of sight out of mind and it's only what's right in front of them what the media is talking about at that very moment they they can't yep. look at the puzzle from you know a fifty thousand foot view they can only look at it in such a single monolithic view that's right in front of them and it's very unfortunate because i think that's the the biggest problem with human beings today is they cannot uh, take in new information and accept it. They, they, it, it's, it's really difficult for people to admit that they were deceived. That's the hardest part. Yeah. Especially when that deception is the foundation of your world. But the truth <laughs> is if you live on a spinning ball, you have no foundation. You're lost in space, spinning out of control. And I'm giving you the opportunity to step down on the foundation of the universe, the earth, the, and put yourself in the place where you have, uh, your divine power and and take it back is really easy. It's it's unbelievable the stuff that I've been able to do since I become a flat earther. It, it's uh, it's amazing. I, I stand up to authority like the police. I I would never have had the guts to do this. You know, I I was shopping without a mask in Costco. They called the friggin' police on me. The police were being assholes. They asked me for my ID. I refused to give it to them. And they're like, no, you have to give it to me. And I'm like, no. You're, I don't. You have to give me your ID, and I made them give me their ID. <laughs> people don't know their rights, you're, and you're 100 percent right in doing what you yeah. did. Um, yeah, and people don't want to stand up. They, they it, that that's another thing with the masks. They they do that. On I am purpose. banned from Costco and from being on their property <laughs> forever, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm banned from a couple stores by me as well because I won't yeah. wear a mask. I'm How do they ban you if they never if you never give them your ID? 
uh, my photos. Because I made a video and it went viral and it was on my channel called okay. David Weiss. And they found it. They got YouTube to remove it. And then they sent oh, me they're, a they're, certified they're, letter um, so with a return there? check for my membership. Get the fuck oh. out of here, really? <laughs> yeah. At least, at least they returned your money. Like at least they. Didn't well, of course they would have to. Otherwise, they'd you know they'd be afraid I'd sue them. I know it's it, it, it's it's such an overreach of power that these companies are are, are doing, all behind the the right. guise of fear, because it's it's nonsense. It's it's absolute nonsense. <laughs> Um, Nick, so gonna wrap it up. What do you think? Final well, question. One, yeah, yeah, one thing. Well, I, I'm gonna I'm yeah. gonna jump in here because okay. I know one of the things, Dave, you mentioned earlier that you wanted to to tie in towards the end was why the lie. I kind of told you the the lie is it's about control. It's about making you um, think that you live in a godless or distant god universe where asteroid could take you out where. Um, you know, we're running out of dinosaur juice for our cars, where nuclear bombs are going to kill you, where, you know, you're just living in fear, insignificant, you're just a random accident, versus the reality of the world is that we're at the center of creation. And once you see the creation, you can no longer deny the existence of a creator. I'll leave it there. There's a creator. Mm -hmm. And we are in a divine spot. And nobody has dominion over us. So you take back your power, you unplug from the matrix. It's a, that's an analogy, but it's not far off from the friggin' movie um, where we stop feeding them our power. And they don't want us to know that because they need to control our minds. And people that wake up to the flat earth literally wake up to everything else. It's, a, it's, a, it's amazing. I woke people up to 9-11, the Boston event, the Connecticut event, and they go right back to sleep. They go right back to work. Nothing friggin' changes. Then you wake them up to flat earth. They're like, Holy crap, you know, <laughs> the, the Pulse Club, the fucking Vegas, you know, they, they go, they go into everything and they, yeah. they're like, wow. Well, that, 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 that's kind of how it worked for us. Just the opposite, you know, 9-11, once you lied to me once, that's it. Like, I'm going to start digging and going forward yeah. and figuring out what else you lied to me about. Um, and Flat Earth is honestly probably the last rabbit hole that I haven't gone down. Well Dave, with all the stuff going on in this world, why are you talking about flat earth? And it's because if we get our freedom back, how long can we keep it if we're lost in space, spinning out of control, don't know who we are? And the answer is not friggin' long. So this is the most important topic of our so time. That was actually the answer to my next question, because I remember you guys reached out to us and you were going to explain how flat earth directly affects our civil liberties. And you just answered it right there. Um, and I never thought of it that way. It's it's really wild because um, you have so many rabbit holes to go down and so many things that we've been told that were flat out lies, like bold face lies. And anybody to sit here and believe all of those lies and then not question what we were told about the earth. You like you said, you're, you're still fast asleep at the wheel. You have to question yep. everything. Yep. Yep. Um, yep. So, Dave, I really appreciate you, man. I, I know you got to head out. Um, thanks for coming on. We definitely would love to do it again. Um, <laughs> There's so many, I took so many again. notes. Huh? <laughs> I took so many notes I'm going to look into. How are you feeling Nick, now, get Nick? The, get, Nick, get the app and just start clicking away. You'll find all the information. Otherwise, you'll How can we find your app? Let, let, the, let the listeners know how they can find your app, too. Just search the Google Play Store or Apple Store for Flat Earth, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. If you just put in Flat Earth Clock, it'll come up. But on, on Android, there's a free version made by a bunch of globe heads that are trying to control your mind. If you get that, which is fine, you can. But don't send me a note telling me my app sucks and it has nothing in it because it's not my app. I'll link it down so, below in the description for everybody. It's by Blue Water Bay. If you're watching on a computer, just point your phone at this QR code and it'll pop right up on your screen. Um, and it's $2.99. There is a subscription in there that you do not have to subscribe to. It's 99 cents a month or 11 bucks for the year. If you want to support me, feel free. But if not, it only has one pop-up. It can exit out within a split second and it's gone. No ads, no nothing else. Pop-up goes away and you still get everything. So only subscribe if you absolutely would like to support me so I can keep doing this. And where can everybody find your, your podcast and your show? The my my YouTube my uh, my podcast, um, Facebook page and 
um, website by the same name, The Flat Earth Podcast. And awesome. my YouTube channel is the initials for Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole. It's just D-I-T-R-H. I have lots of short uh, videos there that will, uh, they, they're fun, good, good ones to send to our family and friends that, that, you know, like, hey, what do you think about this? I'm shocked <laughs> YouTube still allows you to operate. I really am. Uh, yeah, me so too. They remove, remove so many people. We talk, we joke about it all the time. Up, oh, this is the episode that we're getting removed. Well, we're I think they, I think it would cause a bigger problem if they remove me, because you know, like, why are you removing flat, flat Earth videos? Oh, yeah, validation. Well, that's, that's what they're doing with us in in our in our world. They're removing us from Twitter. And oh yeah, I know. Oh, I mean, yeah, it's 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 rough, but. Dave, we really appreciate your time, man. It was a lot of fun. It was a pleasure to meet you and uh, and and chop it up about right. flat Earth because yeah, this, no, this is something that, <laughs> yeah, it was really interesting. We talk about a lot of rabbit holes, and this is not one that I've I've personally uh, gone down. And I really appreciate your knowledge and everything that that you were able to show us because this is something that is that is really new to me, um, which is not normal for a rabbit hole. And uh, we look forward to doing it again. So thanks again, Dave. Uh, uh, all right, man. Thanks. See you. Yeah. Right. All right, thank guys. you so much, Dave. We, we thank really you, Dave. appreciate everybody listening. Please like, subscribe, share all of our content. It really helps us out. Go to our email list and our website, WPRUSA.com. And shout out to our video sponsor of the day, BrickandMirrorBeauty.com. Put in WPRUSA for 10% off. And until next time, guys, where we go one, we go all. You can't handle the truth. <laughs>